board to actual here. Man, anyway, welcome to the Pantry of Horror. We're gonna look at two hot franchises. We're talking Resident Evil, we're talking Silent Hill. Now, they're gonna face down on which one's gonna be scarier. I don't know, I think I do, but we're gonna look at the video. These two franchises have become some of the biggest names in entertainment. What started off as two little horror games on the first PlayStation have turned into multiple movies, spin-off games, mobile apps and novelizations. Over the years, both Resident Evil and Silent Hill have taken twists and turns that have both surprised and angered people. But let's celebrate the good times, shall we? Poor little guy. The first Resident Evil came back way back in 1996. The series became more and more action based over the years, but I want to talk about one entry in particular, the 2002 remake of Resident Evil. This is a total rebuild of the first game. New environments, new puzzles and new monsters to fight off. The story remains pretty much unchanged however. On investigating the set of murders, the second team of the special tactics and rescue squad stop reporting in. The alpha team go in to investigate and everything goes pear-shaped from there. Come on! One big change in this game is that the monsters come back from the dead. Again. Slow shambling zombies can turn into fast nimble creatures with claws if you kill them and don't burn them. So an hour or so later you might have eliminated a threat but it'll come back to slice and dice you. Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey Whisker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. The first Silent Hill game came out in 1999, and the next three games for the PlayStation 2 are often cited as some of the scariest games of all time. Mind-bending puzzles, alternative worlds, and nightmarish creatures are staples of the series, and these games are certainly no exception. Three different characters appear over the three games, each with their own backstories and twisted tales. In Silent Hill 2, you play as James Sunderland, whose deceased wife writes him a letter. In Silent Hill 3, you play as Heather, who might just be able to give birth to a demon god. And in Silent Hill 4, you play as Henry, who just happens to have moved into a possessed apartment block. Who would have figured? Hello? While Resident Evil usually had enough weapons to get you through the rough times, characters in Silent Hill were often terrible shots and relied more on hitting things and running away to survive. The majority of monsters in Resident Evil were experiments gone wrong, while in Silent Hill they revolved around ghosts, demons and mannequins. Since moving to this generation of consoles, both Silent Hill and Resident Evil have taken turns in different directions. What's wrong with this picture? However, special mention must go to the last main entry in the Silent Hill series, Downpour. Some of the side missions featured in this game add little nuggets of story that really are exceptional. Playing these games these days is very difficult, especially if you don't have the original consoles. The Silent Hill HD collection is notoriously bad, and the Resident Evil remake is only available on old Nintendo platforms. I would really pay good money for HD versions on Steam, but I'm afraid we're going to have to dig out those old consoles, dust off a CRT monitor, and get scared like the good old days. Hey y'all, thank you for joining me in my pantry of horror. Make sure y'all buy my new album, hit me up on the Twitter, Facebook, Instagrams, YouTubes, you boobs, you know, all that good stuff. Anyway, we're going to leave you with a hot rhyme, son. Yeah, yeah, uh. Take it home, a pantry of horror. Doing all these things that make you holler. Got my gold skulls on my medallions. Now I'm gonna make my millions work. <laughs>